We didn't do bird tier list, did we? I don't think we did the bird tier list on um on t on tier zoo. Wait, wait, no, 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 wait. It was bird tier list and dog tier list. Okay, let's do dog tier list first because that video sh that video is shorter. I don't know how. I'm, t I'm trying to see what the time what the time gonna be looking like because y'all know I'll be talking this shit. Dog, dog, dog tier list. Talk to me, dog. Show me dog. Talk dog tier list. Best dog, best dog in your opinion. The best dog in your opinion. What do you think it is? I'm gonna be honest, okay? What is the dog that was off of, uh, well, I guess he was like part wolf, right? But what's the dog that was on, on Balto? What is the, what is the Balto dog? Yo, what is up, Bucketeers? Today we'll be checking out a dog. Y'all remember the movie Balto? First, we gotta get into today's pair promoted song. Let me get that. B Balto was not a fucking pit bull, bro. Bro, do y'all remember Balto, man? A husky? He's a husky? Okay, so I, I like, then I like huskies. Huskies are wolves or whatever. Wolves are technically like dogs, man. I would just do wolf. Because I ain't going to lie, the wolves in the movie was better. I mean, this is a wolf right here, ain't it? Hold on, let me go back. Answered by Audible. Shout out to Audible. <laughs> Hold on, bro. My, my fingers feel, my fingers feel empty, man. <laughs> I forgot my ring. My ring. There we go. Talk to me. Play of the game. Yo, was that supposed to help, bruh? I've made it pretty clear that I see house cats and domestic dogs as top tier. But although I've made videos already on the non-domestic felines, I haven't done the same for canines yet. Canines are some of the most successful builds ever, despite being relatively new to the competitive scene. They debuted in the Oligocene expansion, but they really hit their stride in the Miocene, because the devs nerfed the dominant herbivore factions that had previously been untouchable. Canines had great matchups against the new, less tanky herbivores like deer, cows, and horses, and so canines were able to expand from North America and become a part of the meta on every single server other than Antarctica. But enough about the patch notes, let's get back to present day. All canines may seem similar, and they are, but there are some awesome, unique attributes and abilities that are raccoon? worth discussing, as well as some misconceptions worth dispelling. So without further ado, let's get into it. So one of the key components to a successful canine build is team play. Hunting in packs and having a defined social structure turns what normally would be a pretty average build into a truly dumb one. Is and so the dogs that are the lowest on the tier list are of course going to be the ones that don't do this or do this poorly. At the bottom of the tier list we have the maned wolf. Now it's hard to look at this build and not think, wow, that's really cool. The maned wolf is the tallest canine in the current expansion, which gives it a bonus against stealth because it can see over tall grass. It's also the only one with a mane, a rare attribute that's usually only seen on lions and That thing looked like a like a Pokemon. Horses. And while manes do provide some protection against critical hits, it doesn't do much else. The maned wolf is also the biggest outlier of the dog faction in that it has a completely solitary playstyle. As a result, it doesn't have near the same PvP potential that the more social dogs do. Despite being the tallest of canines, it I has never, to settle I have not heard of that targets. thing before. Since those aren't a very good source of it XP, looked like a, like it a big fox. to make up for it by eating a lot of plants and fruit. It's good that it's omnivorous, as being able to function as a scavenger is great. But there's Boom, no ignoring that people can have a much Wait, higher potential that means if meat and team strats. One step plants, up on this right? list and we have the Omnivore? coyote, or no, for the non-American players, the jackal. A build that honestly just needs a slight buff in order to be really Coyote. Strong, but at the moment isn't in the greatest spot in the meta. Even with solid okay, team plays, right. coyotes just don't do enough damage to score eliminations on targets that aren't already super weak. True. For example, in this clip here, we can see a team of coyotes diving on this low-level deer player, but they're actually unable to get the pick before the rest of the deer team rallies and chases them off. Damn. If coyotes were to spec into some longer, more dagger-like teeth, I could see them being better suited for this, but for now, they just aren't threatening enough. They tend to have equal or possibly favorable matchups against Lynx and Bobcat players, but lose hard against Cougars. Mm, yeah. So I think this puts them at the high end of D tier definitively. 
One step higher and we've got the Fox. Now I know most of us are used to seeing Fox at the top of most I, tier lists, I but in Foxes. outside they're a lot more balanced. They have extremely similar base stats to Coyotes, but also have a few unique abilities of their own. They've got extremely strong perception abilities that allow them to deal with I stealth love foxes, strategies man. employed I by I thought Foxes were like cats though, but... Targets. And their precision pounce attack is extremely useful for I... picking off targets that they discover what? hiding under the snow. Some foxes have also specced into climbing abilities, which is really useful for getting out of reach of the more powerful players. While their higher agility can help why. them avoid land predators, their smaller size does make them a target for raptors, so it's a bit of a trade-off. Coyotes and foxes both utilize team play, but in a very disorganized fashion. Unlike the higher tier builds, they don't have an established pecking order or coordinated strategies. They Bro, sort I thought of it was like cats. I thought it was like cats because like um, the fox and the hound. Like I thought, you know. I thought, the, I thought the hound couldn't fuck with the fox because it was like a cat or some shit, man. Use numbers to their advantage. Sort of like social spiders, which I cover in my Ew! spider video. I would never Next watch up, that video. The wolf. the wolf is one of Hell the cornerstones yeah. of the forest meta and pioneered oh. the technique that most pack hunting builds use today. The wolf hunting technique has been What's above a wolf? and analyzed to an incredible degree. So here's a rundown of the strat plus a few tips on how to counter it. The basic wolf strat is a five-step plan that utilizes every ability in is the a wolf's hyena arsenal, a, a, and it goes a, like this. A Step one wolf? is locating the target. Wolf players will use perception abilities like smell, sound, and footprint tracking to locate a potential bounty. Once found, they gather the pack and move on to step two. In step two, all wolves go into stealth mode and attempt to get as close as possible to the target so cool, without man. it. Once the target detects them, they move on to step three. <laughs> step three is the defining moment in the hunt, and the success depends on what the target does here. Once the target detects the wolves, it can either charge, stand, or flee. The wolves will only proceed to step four once the target flees. If, if the they stayed together, to stand its ground, if they stayed the together, their mans would have been fine. They really just left them to die. Proceed to step four once the target That's flees. That's kind of fucked. If the target chooses to stand its ground, the wolves must use intimidation abilities like growling and barking in order to reduce the target's resolve. If the intimidation succeeds and the target flees, step four is triggered. Step four pits the mobility stat of the target against the mobility stat of the wolves. This step is also when the wolves will attempt to isolate the target player from their group if they're in one. Damn. If the wolves manage to catch up to the target, the final step begins. Step 5 is the actual attack. Wolves rely on their bite move to inflict damage, and the size of their target determines where they'll try to land a hit. Against midweights, wolves will go for a crit by attacking the throat. If this succeeds, it should result in a one-shot kill. Twitch, Against this is heavies, educational they purposes. won't go for a crit at all. We're because learning. heavies can one-shot wolves if they aren't careful. Going for a crit puts them in range of an attack. Oh. So usually, wolves will opt to attack the hindquarters since it's safer. Since they can't crit by attacking the hindquarters, it generally takes three successful bites in order to deal enough damage to inflict the bleed status effect. This drains the target's stamina and health over time, eventually leading to a game over for them. It's awesome that wolf mains have made their strategy He's guide got available to players, man. but doing so also allows players to learn the matchup and develop counterplay options. Here are some of the best ways to combat the 5-step wolf strat. The first is to spec into some high-level stealth abilities. Wolves actually have a relatively weak sense of smell, so camouflage is actually really useful against them. A good stealth player will be able to stop the hunt at step 1. If stealth doesn't work with your build, you can stop the hunt at step 2 by detecting them during their stealth phase. Strong perception abilities will easily in there. cause the wolf's mediocre stealth to fail against you. For example, wolves would pretty much never be able to successfully get within a dangerous range against a giraffe. I'm about to say, Ain't but if no they way. do manage to sneak up on you, the most important is counterplay a option is to stand your ground. Wolves will only move to their attack phase if their target opts to flee. A player who opts to defend drastically increases their chances. Oh, he getting success. jumped. Since oh, he's the getting jumped, bro. The option at that point is to use its rather weak intimidation abilities. If wolves had access to roar like lions and tigers do, they'd be really tough to deal with. Happy birthday. But since they don't, it's pretty easy to resist the intimidation attempts, especially in a group. In fact, a heavy player can end the encounter pretty quickly by using their own intimidation abilities like charge. So even though wolves do have a pretty solid offensive strategy, players with good fundamentals and matchup experience will be able to Y'all see the boss? The Why is that the and thing so you're looking wolves, at? Much like birds of prey, function as the gatekeepers to the higher tier and are placed solidly in A tier. The highest ranked canine build, other than domestic dogs of course, which I've already covered in another video, is the African Painted Hound. This build follows a very similar strategy to the wolf, but has stats and abilities much better suited for it. Its higher stealth allows it to get closer before being detected, what and its the higher hell speed is that? reduces the chance oh. that its target outruns it. Ain't that a hyena? Their sharper teeth deal more damage, and their highly sophisticated social structure is actually built around propping up the weaker members, rather than simply funneling the best loot to the highest ranking or? members. 
Considering Coyote. that these players succeed in a meta that contains some of the most powerful builds in the game, it's tough to deny oh, that African my Painted Hounds are top tier. Damn! If you'd like to learn more about how canines evolved to become some of the most successful builds of all time, I highly recommend the book How to Tame a Fox and what Build is an a Dog African painted by Lee Mila Trout and Leanne Dugatkin, which you can listen to on Audible, the leading provider of premium digital spoken audio information and entertainment. Is this a wild internet. dog? Audible what is offering fuck? our listeners a free audiobook with a 30-day trial membership. Just go to audible.com slash tearsu and browse the unmatched selection of audio programs. Yo, Download a free title and start listening. I really be, it's I really be finding out some new stuff. I ain't... I don't even know what that is. Is it only in Africa, man? I mean, hence the name. Okay, bird tier list. Bird tier list. Best bird. See, y'all are gonna go for like attacks, but hummingbirds. Hummingbirds is hummingbirds is fire, man. I see. See, y'all are going like eagle. Owl. Owls are cool, but hummingbirds. Hummingbirds are fast. I'm fucking with humming, hummingbirds, but I, I know they're probably low tier. But I'm going to stick beside them. I'm going to stick beside them. Vultures. Ooh, vultures. Hawk. Owls are fire. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Birds are one of the most popular playable classes in the game, with a huge number of successful builds Parrots and tons are of cool. cool strategies. However, some of these strategies have clearly been more successful than others. Today we'll be going over the bird tier list to see which bird ranks highest. But before we get into looking at specific bird builds, let's do an overview of the basic attributes and special abilities the bird faction Pigeons has access are to, else. as well as a quick rundown of the history of the bird faction. Oh, what's the one? Is so birds are one of the newer factions in the game, joining the game's roster during the latter part of the Mesozoic expansion. What's the bird with the colorful, like, tails? That, that, uh... Peacock? Is it a peacock? They began as an offshoot of the dinosaur peacock. faction Peacocks look that cool. was specifically adapted to arboreal gameplay. But when the devs dropped the Cenozoic balance patch, these small avians were the only dinosaurs not to be hit by the banhammer. Fast forward to today's meta and birds are one of the most successful factions in the game, owing this success to a handful of powerful unique abilities, in addition to the obvious flying oh, attributes. First of which is their beak. Now, beaks were not an entirely new ability for the reptile player base, but birds went far deeper into the beak skill tree than most dinosaurs ever had, with many bird players opting for extremely specialized beaks to give them an edge in specific Damn, scenarios. Damn, he got pieced up! However, even the basic beak offers plenty of advantages. While their lack of teeth does mean that they deal reduced damage with their bite attack, birds can be far more accurate. Ain't no way a bear got scared of a bird. Hey, bro. Enabling them to hit weak you see points their, or secure You see their beaks, man? Them shits is probably sharp as hell. Such as the thin hurt box of a snake. Beaks also offer moderate protection, potentially reducing headshot damage and nullifying imprecise counterattacks. Beaks also offer some of the best stab type damage in the game. Yo, I remember I seen videos on this bird. Beaks, you, look how his body moves, but his head sta stays completely still. How? Also offer some of the best stab type damage in the game, which when used accurately can deal massive damage on crit. Beaks are also excellent tools for dealing with parasites. In fact, they're so good that oftentimes other less dexterous players will party up with bird support players in order to have a better matchup against parasites. Feathers are also a unique and powerful trait exclusive to Hard. birds that provides excellent cold protection without causing the user to become too over-encumbered to fly. Feathers also offer pretty substantial defense Snakes against crush type fighting attacks, birds? which is especially important to birds because of their hollow bones trait. Hollow bones are another ability meant to synergize with the flying playstyle. Now, a common misconception is that bird bones are hollow in order to reduce Oh yeah, that's load. the flying fish, but man. Actually, they're hollow Use in order to useless. Let bird players literally fill them with useless, air, which grants them a massive boost to their maximum stamina. Without this, it'd be extremely tough for a bird to fly for any significant period of time. The trade-off, of course, is that a broken bone not only deals serious damage, oh. but also potentially reduces the player's maximum stamina by a huge margin. So a bird player will need all of the blunt damage defense. Oh my, what the? And speaking of blunt damage, the bird's lower bone density means the bird's own blunt force strikes, like wing attacks, also deal reduced damage. The bird's like this, the bro. The top tier bird builds are the ones that can best capitalize <laughs> hey, on the strength hey, yeah, of the class. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah. That about covers the basics, so let's oh, get into the tier oh. list. That's literally how my shit look without. At the bottom of the glasses. tier list, we have two flightless bird builds. 
both with essentially the same glaring weakness. These are the kiwi and kakapo. A flightless Kiwis bird? Are hilariously part of Why the are they even called the bird then? Ostriches, emus, and oh, wait, 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 wait. For some reason, they opted to give up the flight ability, but didn't use the extra available skill points to spec into gigantism. I ain't gonna lie, that would be scary seeing an ostrich fly, though. Like the rest of their squad did. The result is a build that can literally only exist on island servers yeah, where there's no active mammal This is a terrible base, build. This is this is New Zealand. A terrible the build. is a flightless version of the parrot and I'm although sorry. parrots are undoubtedly excellent bird builds, the flightless weakness is too glaring to ignore. It looked like it want to be an owl Due to or something. invasive species like rats and cats establishing a presence on island servers. Both of these flightless bird builds are seeing major declines in their player base, Damn. and I would not be surprised if they all ended up switching mains. Flight is just too strong an ability to pass up. Yeah. Which brings me to the next builds on my tier list. That sucks. That sucks. So I see Rappy? what these builds were going for. Being giant could potentially make up for the lack of flight. Sure. But in practice, this didn't quite pan out. While these are technically the strongest birds in they terms go of base power and defense, they kind of go crazy. But it's a their it's, weight class. I would say this is an L build, though. They're one of the few megafauna like, builds look. that can be taken down by cheetahs. You can't even do shit. They should be able to completely annihilate cheetahs with their powerful claws. Damn. Their huge weak point presents a lot of opportunity for counterattack too. So if they ever get too bold, they're setting themselves up for a tough loss. Oh my gosh. Lastly. Oh my god. Yo, there was a video of of a. Oh my god, it was an ostrich that got its head caught in a bar, and it was pulling, 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 and then it pulled so hard that it. it Took its head off, like it ripped its head off, and the thing died. Google it. It's the craziest video. That they are forced to nest on these the niggas is stupid, man. them into an even more vulnerable position than most birds, as ratite eggs are extremely valuable as loot. Objective defense is not an easy task even for high tier builds. So for ostriches, emus, and cassowaries, uh. this is a huge hurdle. Hummingbird W. Next on the tier list we have the hummingbird. This build spec purely into. Hold on. Look at the mobility. Broken. But look at the build. Next on the tier list, we have the hummingbird. Look how fire this build is, though. Like, it just looks dope. It would just be dope to be a hummingbird. This build spec purely into mobility and just about nothing else. And as a result, is the only bird build with full 360 degree movement, similar to a dragonfly. Yeah. This, combined with its extremely small size, enables the hummingbird to very quickly change direction mid-flight. I love it. Allowing it to easily dodge attacks and fly around obstacles. Yep. Woo! More importantly, it allows the hummingbird to access nectar, which is an extremely valuable source of energy that's normally inaccessible to birds, since birds are usually too heavy to land oh, on that's, flowers that's and beautiful. not agile enough to access nectar. Yo, he hit the fucking bee! <laughs> since birds are usually too heavy to land on flowers <laughs> and not agile enough to access nectar mid-flight. This all sounds great, but the hummingbird also has two very serious weaknesses. What? The first is pretty obvious. They have no combat prowess at all, and any attack they fail to dodge will send them right back to the character select screen. But in addition to that- Did this nigga get taken out by a praying mantis? Any attack they fail to dodge will send them right back to the character select screen. Oh my god, their health is like, next to none. But in addition to that, <laughs> the insane energy cost of that health is trash. Their flight ability, combined with their total lack of fat storage, means hummingbirds will run out of stamina very quickly if they can't constantly find food. To me, this is a high risk, high reward strategy where the risk far outweighs the reward. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. Like as much as I really like hummingbirds, that kind of sucks when you, when you can get cock blocked by a fucking butterfly. Like a butterfly can push you out the way. That kind of sucks. So I have to place them in F tier. I understand. Pigeons are at I, the bottom of D tier. We have the pigeon. Pigeons are pigeon ass. Pigeon build doesn't really have any critical Pigeons flaws, are ass. But they're held back by mediocre stats. In particular, the pigeon is sorely lacking in any combat-focused stat like power or defense. They do best in cities where they're a fucking turtle. A fucking turtle. Their excellent navigation ability grants them an <laughs> extra bit of safety by nesting among high rises in loose rich to locations. A turtle. But even in cities, pigeon players tend to be the main source of XP for higher tier predators. Yeah, and all pigeon player do is wait for human players to feed them. Like, it's just bullshit. Plus, if you're just looking to play a bird build that's good at looting cities, there are better options available anyway. True. The, the peacock, peacock, that's what I was talking about. Another generally understated build with high HP but little else to rely on. 
Oh, these stats are ass. I mean, it looks fire, but the uh, god, golly. It does, however, have one of the highest intimidation proficiency bonuses in the game. Tell me that would not be scary, bro. Tell me that would not be scary. You really don't need a lot of power. You really don't need a lot of health if people are scared to fuck with you. You feel me? Gaining a massive buff to all intimidation checks when its eye spot feather ability is activated. But this is only going to work. It'll probably like work the first time, then the second time be like, yo, he did this last time, but like nothing happened. I think we should press him. I, I really don't think it do nothing. <laughs> like the animals start figuring out. I really don't think this shit does anything. Like, you know how we roar and like it's loud and scary, but it's just a roar. I think that's the roar. And this shit we. As impressive as this ability is, the peacock's actual attacks do very little damage. Bam. So any player able to resist being frightened will have a pretty easy win. The peacock's diamatic display also blocks vision behind itself, making a stealth approach by a third-party attacker extremely easy. Oh, shit! And while they can escape by flying, the feathers of a peacock are so heavy that getting airborne takes a bit longer than most birds, oh, which can be the difference between dodging or dying when under attack. Damn! Flamingos! I almost flamingo forgot about flamingos! Is a bit of an AFK class. Very minimal skill is actually required to pilot this build. They opted to spec into the filter feeding ability meaning all they really need to do to gain experience and progress their character is pick a random spot in the lake bed and start digging around with their beak. Yeah, I feel like I feel like this character, I feel like this build is like Sims build, bro. They just kind of just be doing shit, man. <laughs> they don't really be doing shit, but they just kind of do shit. Scoring free wins against things like snails and shrimp. However, when faced with a challenge from any player anywhere near its size, That's bullying. this build totally falls apart. Stop. They rely on water to impede the approach of predators in order to give them time to escape when attacked. However, this doesn't always work. Baboon! Their defensive stats mean they go down in one or two hits, and their slow flight startup means that oftentimes players will have time to rush them down even when they're in the water. This is an easy build to rack up a bunch of experience with, oh, but also a very easy build oh, to defeat no. if you know their weakness. He's just dragging him, man. Oh my god, he's about to- He was literally about to rip him open. He was literally about to rip that nigga open, oh my god. Ah, the humble chicken. Often compared to the T-Rex mm. to exemplify how far the dinosaur faction has fallen. How y'all feel about the chicken, man? <laughs> how y'all feel about the chicken? Damn, chicken over a flamingo. Then again, I've seen chickens- be annoying and attack people. While I disagree with the implication, I don't disagree Ooh. that chickens are indeed a low tier build. While they aren't anywhere near as totally helpless as the kiwi or cockapoe, they're still a barely average status hey, okay. that lacks the ability to fly for any oh, shit. distance. I thought he got away. They can certainly hold their own against most similarly sized opponents, but oh, with poor shit. escape options and no unique abilities, this build faces an uphill battle against most opponents. Well, okay, I shouldn't say no unique abilities, but to be honest, their fast respawn rate kind of backfired on them due to humans using the factory farming strategy. Yeah. Next in seed tier, we have the Vulture build, Vulture, hold the up. tankiest variant of the Raptor subclass. A good tank build needs to be able to accomplish two things. The first is area denial, which Vultures do quite well. A few of them can easily lock down a carcass, one of the most contested points of interest you'll ever see on the map. They can do this because of their large size and acidic projectile attack. The other thing a tank must be good at is shrugging off hits, and this is where vultures fall short. Their thick feathers easily shield them completely from smaller attacks. But because Bro, of their hollow vultures bones, thieves though, man. Easily crush their defenses and take them down. This be stealing, energy. man. So while they can defend a carcass from, I fucks with vultures, like you know, why work harder when you can work smarter, bruh? Oh, they killed their prey. I can fly, just fly in, get some get some nibbles, fly away when they try to come and attack, fly back, get some nibbles, get like, come on now. Hordes of smaller scavengers, they don't have much counterplay towards bigger, more aggressive brawlers. The command post is now under hostile control. I don't, I don't blame them at all. The woodpecker, woodpecker spent the bulk of their evolution points optimizing and perfecting the peck attack. I ain't gonna lie, that shit will give me a headache, but damage. Power and efficiency with one goal in mind. I guess it's to different. be able to hit insect players through cover. Burrowing is one of the safest, most effective ways insect players can avoid combat. But the woodpecker absolutely demolishes this strategy. Oh, I don't want to see it eat it. Please don't show that. One of the main advantages- Oh, you can see his insides. Which is of this strategy is that having a powerful beak that's highly effective at drilling through wood also just means you've got a super sharp oh! beak that's highly effective as a general purpose weapon. One of you see how he immediately put his wings down? Fuck, damn, you got it, bro. That shit hurt. The main disadvantages of this strategy 
is that pecking at wood gives the woodpecker's location away, True. alerting more powerful predators to its presence mm. while it's in the middle of pecking and is distracted. True. Yo, that's like accidentally shooting off your gun in a battle royale. I did it before when I was playing Super People. I accidentally shot my gun, and then I got, I got gunned down by two different teams, bro. They just started busting. I was like, fuck. One particular woodpecker build, the Toucan, opted to spec into more bulk and Ooh. an even more powerful beak, which, while less useful for attacking insects through the wood, is still extremely powerful for PvP. All in all, interesting strategy. By no means flawless, but definitely has some solid strengths. That shit is crazy. Wait, penguins so are crazy. Flightless birds up until now. So you might be surprised to see me rate penguins as upper mid tier. Penguins kind of hard. Always have to work when you stream smiling face with tear w stream go. It's okay, bro. One day you'll be off. Rather than low tier. <laughs> the difference is penguins actually swapped out their wings for an arguably equally viable alternative, flippers, which essentially allow them to fly through the water with incredible agility. This gives them a downright broken matchup against fish. Yeah. However, this strategy is pretty much only viable on servers where there are no land-based predators that penguins would still need to worry about. True. So if for whatever reason a few polar bears ever spawn in the Antarctic server, it's kind of game over for that entire build. Bam. The predators they have to contend with in the water are even more dangerous. Yeah. And while their agility does help them dodge attacks, Look at them go. ultimately it's still a totally one-sided matchup. Their strategy is pretty cool and actually fairly dominant due to limited competition. And they run deep. But I wouldn't be surprised to see the entire Penguin player base collapse if the devs ever add new DLC in the form of an Antarctic land predator. Uh oh. Or even if they just buff the land mobility of the leopard seal. Still, top of C tier is a respectable position for a flightless bird. Yeah, that's not bad. Especially for not being able to fly like what At the bottom hell? of B tier, we have the goose. Yo, I've got go an entire video dedicated to the goose build. I ain't gonna lie, this build, the goose build is fucking annoying yo and it's like literally like a law that you're not supposed to mess with them niggas they literally cross the street humans can't do shit about it we literally have to wait in our cars when we can easily run them over but no they walking they got a whole family they bring their fucking cousins walking across the street taking their time sometimes they'll just stop and stare at the car like we know you can't do shit <laughs> we know you can't do shit <laughs> But in short, it's against the law, huh? The goose has solid base stats, including above average hit points. However, its abysmal power stat leads it to rely heavily on intimidation to secure territory. They literally don't care. They be pressing human builds. <laughs> goose will, geese will press human builds. This can be unbelievably effective at times. Look at it. It's not uncommon to see top tier predators flee an encounter <laughs> that they easily could have won. Still, the obvious flaw in this strategy. I don't like. They got, they got my respect though. They got my respect, man. Is that if the goose's opponent resists being frightened, the goose will be wide open to a punishing counterattack. In addition, <laughs> oh my gosh, Twitch, this is for entertainment purpose. I'm not. I mean, educational purposes. Jesus Christ, he got kicked in the face. The goose's weak spot is easily exploitable by intelligent players. So careless aggression. Oh my God, be the goose's biggest fucking elephant, biggest weakness at the same time. All in all, still a surprisingly effective strategy. Heron. The Heron build put Heron. a huge amount of evolution points into maxing out the puncture damage it can Ooh. deal with its beak, and it did so to great success. Herons have one of the highest damage pecs of any bird. Damn! They frequently one hit their targets. Oh my even gosh! Those with scale armor like large fish and juvenile crocodiles. The effectiveness of their piercing attack is amplified by their long neck, which gives their attacks a deceptively long range. Look giving their strikes an almost cobra-like flash to them. Oh! They have downright oppressive oh matchup, <laughs> giving their strikes an almost yeah. cobra-like flash to them. Yeah! They have downright oppressive matchup Frog against run. Fish, amphibians, and all other small oh. aquatic builds. One vulnerability they do have is that their flight ability has a lot of startup, making it a bit less reliable as an escape option if they do happen to get oh, ambushed. Oh, damn! Still, it's certainly not terrible. Another weakness is that their long neck presents a bit of a weak point, making lunging forward with repeated pecking attacks a bit risky if you get too predictable about it. Good players will be able don't to do it, punish don't do it. careless Just Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it! Oh my god, he got your ass! Falcon! In high B tier, we have the Falcon. Don't look up that shit crazy. Holy shit. A raptor build that opts to defeat its opponents using speed and superior maneuvering rather than actual Falcons power. Falcons are, oh my god. Falcons gosh. actually have a below average power stat for a raptor and don't deal particularly high damage in close combat. Their talons are pretty small compared to hawks, owls, and eagles. And so instead of slashing and stabbing with their claws, 
Falcons actually punch with their feet to disorient or concuss their target, and then finish the fight with their more powerful beak. That's why it's Falcon Punch. <laughs> oh my god, he, he slumped this- he literally snuck him! So instead of slashing and stabbing with their claws, Falcons Yo! actually punch with their oh, feet man! to disorient or concuss their target, and then finish the fight with their more powerful beak. In the right situation, this can deal absolutely massive damage, enough to one-shot a mid-sized target at full HP. Absolutely massive damage, powerful beak. In the right situation, this can deal absolutely massive damage, wow. enough to one-shot a mid-sized target at full HP. The drawback of this strategy is that Falcons can only dish out high damage when they have the time to build up speed first. Mm. This makes the Falcon a pretty poor defender for objective game modes. Damn! And it means the Falcon can struggle to win fights if its first attack doesn't connect. Yeah, I guess it did need, like, to be... They needed to be, like, nerfed somehow. But damn, that kind of sucks. I guess it, I, I guess it kind of balances out. As follow-up attacks will likely not have the same force built up as the first. Imagine if they could just go around just one-shotting animals. That would, that would just be fucked. Still, the burst damage potential of this build cannot be ignored, so it earns its spot in high B tier. Oh my god. Songbirds! This might seem like an odd inclusion to cap off B tier, but yeah. Songbirds are a highly efficient build for their size right, talk and to do me. deserve recognition on this tier list. This is a huge group, including finches, starlings, sparrows, wrens, and birds of paradise. And while some are flashier than others, they all have relatively similar stats, with extremely Mobility. high agility being their core stat. Unlike many of the builds lower on the tier list that have difficulty getting themselves airborne quickly, Songbirds have extremely low startup on their flight move, oh my allowing gosh. them to reposition themselves easily and quickly. Okay. This makes their approach very Meow. difficult to punish, making Songbirds excellent at chipping away at defensive players. Oh shit, this, makes them this the fucking Floyd Mayweather of birds. And great at stealing loot from slower builds. Yoink. <laughs> their safety in numbers strategy can and makes them great at stealing loot from slower builds. Yoink. Their safety in numbers strategy can actually be somewhat intimidating and disorienting too, making it rather difficult to attack a party of songbirds mid-flight. Oh While they certainly aren't invincible, having one of the lower HP stats among birds, oh. they're an often overlooked but undoubtedly successful bird build. The swan? No, swans are kind of- A tier we have the swan. Yeah. The swan is essentially a goose that has the power stat to actually back up its attempts to intimidate. They kind of be the doing wing too attacks much, that man. most bird players use do very little damage and aren't very useful aside from pushing other players around. The swan's wing attack can break bones and concuss foes. Break bones? Because of this, swans are one of the best builds at controlling important points of interest, as their hyper-aggressive playstyle can result in huge territory gains. Of course, they do have the same weaknesses as geese, so targeting the swan's neck with an attack can defuse the threat. But this is a bit riskier of a play against a swan than against a goose. Yeah. All around, sturdy defender, definitely A tier. Jeez. Uh, owl! Next in A tier, we have the Owl. Owl is crazy. Faction's premier stealth assassin build. It owes this reputation to its special ability, which allows it to fly completely silently. This makes the owl's strikes very difficult to defend against, That's as players just about never see them coming. While not as stacked in the power department as their daytime counterparts, owls do have quite solid base stats. While they aren't likely to one-shot high HP targets, they do have enough force behind their attacks to be able to defend themselves and their territory, even from powerful enemies. In addition to granting the owl the silent flight perk, the owl's thick, bushy feathers offer additional defense against attacks, mm. enabling it to stand its ground in important objective defense scenarios. Interestingly, the silent flight perk did come at the cost of the waterproof ability that most bird feathers what? have. What? Meaning that falling into the water or getting caught in a rainstorm can actually disable the owl's flight ability. Damn. A pretty unique weakness and certainly something that can be played around, but interesting nonetheless. Damn, that kind of sucks. That's a big drawback. In the middle of A tier, we have the Eagles and Hawks. Ah, oh, shit! Hawks and Eagles follow the same basic strategy, both having tailored their builds to focus on dealing maximum damage oh with their god, talents. Oh my god, look at this shit! Hawks are the smaller variants of this group, and because of this, they are far more agile. While not as powerful as Eagles, their agility enables them to weave through cover better okay, that than was, most birds that was of prey. Clean. This makes them well-suited for rushing down players, both in open terrain Damn. and in dense, difficult-to-navigate terrain like forests. Eagles, in contrast, are much more powerful, but their larger size and wider wingspan prevents them from entering dense forests. Still, in open prairies and mountains, eagles can be incredible. Holy shit. Holy shit. 
the fact that a bird can think like, yo, I'm literally finna grab him and just throw him down his mountain. That's kind of scary, man. Really effective. This nigga can't fly. Brutal damage See at the bottom, bitch. Enormous dagger-like talons. Oh, oh my god. Yo. Dealing absolutely brutal damage with their enormous dagger-like talons. Oh Enough my. Enough to take down players in higher weight classes without even requiring. Damn. Control. These are without a doubt some of the strongest bird builds in the game for PvP, and have been for quite some time. Pelican! At the top of A tier, we have the grappler tank hybrid, the Pelican. Oh, those are the things with the big old. The Pelican's main strength is its throat pouch. Yeah. Grappling and throat goes players can be a highly effective takedown strategy, but birds struggle with this since they can't use Yo, their wings to grab. Yo, they be packing them shits to the fucking brim, bruh. And since their beaks aren't always the most reliable grappling weapons, sometimes leading to targets escaping. The Pelican's grapple is, in contrast, almost totally inescapable, and works on targets much larger than you might think. While this attack style- And don't they just swallow it? Do they just swallow it alive? Like, they don't got no teeth? ...is most effective against fish. It's quite powerful against other bird, Ain't rodent, no way. and amphibian players, although it does have its limitations. Okay, this I was, combined I was with about to Pelican's say. overall bulk. That's crazy to just swallow something like, like it don't claw. Them, them things don't claw at your throat. It don't hurt, bruh. Makes it one of the most difficult birds to take down in single combat, and enables it to stand its ground against even top tiers like canines. So those of you who follow the channel for a while can probably guess what the top tier birds are gonna be. If you can't, that's probably a good indication that you should be subscribed. Those of you wishing the devs could unban the Velociraptor build, look no further than the Secretary Bird, as it has what basically the... all the same awesome what abilities the hell and is more. This? Hunting on foot and in pairs, they prove time and time again that striking from the sky is overrated. They can easily defeat other high tier builds such as the Cobra and Mongoose with their high damage kicks. Their stomp move has extremely high accuracy, allowing Secretary Bird players to score game ending headshots with ease and they do all this without completely sacrificing their flight ability. If they ever find themselves outmatched, Get the fuck which out of here. only ever happens against builds in higher weight classes, okay, I was about to they say. can still retreat to the sky or treetops. The fact that this strategy works in Africa, one of the most unforgiving servers of all time, is proof enough to me that this is the optimal raptor. Damn. These last two builds are about equally matched. That's kind of cool. Both opting for the same specialization, intelligence. The parrots. Parrots are an extremely unique build with several powerful abilities, not the least of which is their sonic shriek, which can drive away just about any player who invaded their territory, especially what? when employed by a coordinated team. In addition, due to their prehensile beak, parrots have the highest dexterity of any bird, putting them among the. What the fuck? Their prehensile beak, parrots have the highest dexterity of any bird, putting them <laughs> among the best users of the tool use ability. And with an extremely high lifespan, if there was any build that could replace humans if humans ever get their intelligence nerfed, I'd bet on the parrot. I made an entire video on parrots if you're interested, but when it comes to intelligence, yeah, I'm kinda there's one avian now. build that arguably outclasses them. Corvid. Corvids, such as magpies, crows, and ravens, also opt for a high intelligence playstyle, but with a far more expansive social aspect to it. While plenty of bird builds use cooperative team strats, the best corvids operate using a network effect, where knowledge is shared with a huge amount of players over vast distances. This knowledge can include useful points of interest, or even blacklists of dangerous areas or players to avoid. But even individually, corvids have a lot going for them. With significantly higher stealth than parrots, corvids are much better at staying out of conflict. Their pointy beaks, while not as useful for oh, tool use, are a much better combat tool for dealing quick damage. It's also more useful for pressuring and poking opponents, or for provoking larger players into battle. I'm so ages watching the, the aftermath. Oh Corvids my! Are one of the best builds at making use of human-made items, and quickly figure out ways of abusing the system to score quick loot. All in all, Corvids are basically what you'd get if you gave. Mo it just you, it dropped it so the car would run over it, so it could eat what was inside. Corvids are one of the best builds at making use of human-made items and quickly figure out ways of abusing the system to score quick loot. All in all, Corvids are basically what you'd get if you gave monkeys wings. Easily a top tier build. Holy shit. So there you have it, the complete bird tier list. Or rather, as complete as I thought possible for YouTube. If I didn't do a segment on your favorite bird, please let me know in the comments. 
Despite being the longest video I've ever made, there were still a few birds that I cut from the video for time's sake, or because I felt I couldn't discuss the bird properly without getting into territory that was potentially too violent for YouTube. If you're interested in watching the full director's cut version of this video, it's available to watch on Nebula. I was about to say, hey man, I think we would watch creators. it. I'm pretty sure we Nebula would watch it bundled no matter free. how long, how, no matter how long it was. If we're, if we're being completely honest, bro, we're going we were gonna, we we're going to watch it, bro. We're going to watch it. All right. Um, let's move on, bro. Let's move on, man. Actually, mm, Yeah, yo, his videos are so, bro. I love his videos so much. And it's like, I actually be, I should be learning stuff, man. I like, I knew birds. I knew birds were smart. I was thinking about, I was thinking about the, I was thinking about the parrots when I was like, damn, do I want to do the parrots or do I want to move on to the next thing? I kind of want to see what the, because, okay, hold on. Let me see what it was. Uh, par Book donated $5. Our parrots, our Why parrots OP. Not the R word. This I'm from Baton Rouge, so I have to explain a lot of stuff to people because the accent LMAO. He said scraped, not the R word. So now it's now 